would rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, our student showcase, which is um, our uh, middle school Kentucky Youth Assembly, and I think, do you mind? Thank you. <laughs> I know they're out there chit-chatting, so wanted to make sure this. It'll be in it just a second. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Houghton to introduce um, Mrs. Grio and, and our students. Bring them on in here. Yeah, bring them on in. Come, Come on in, line. guys. You can line up in front of us and Very face the exciting. camera. <laughs> <laughs> Camera's over there. there. So. Do you all hear where the camera is? Mm -hmm. I know you want to. Well, you guys can line up right here. Right in front of us, and we don't mind. You might have to do this with the sign board a bit. Okay. Well, I'm really just going to introduce Ms. Grio here, and she's going to talk a little bit about the KYA program, which is the Kentucky Youth Assembly program. And what they do, uh, it's a YMCA organization, and, and they kind of take them through the legislative process uh, in, in a unique way. There's also a high school organization, as I understand. But Ms. Grio is going to talk about it, introduce these young people. They're going to go over the bill they presented uh, in, the, in the Youth Assembly in December, I believe it was, right? Okay. Great, great. great. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Kim Grio. I'm one of the teachers at the high school. I'm senior class sponsor, and I teach the high school version of government. And uh, it was my pleasure this year to uh, work with the KYA kids at the middle school. Not all of our group is here, so I at least want to mention the names of the individuals who, because of sports schedules, could not make it. Last week it rained, so this week they have to make up all of their games and matches. Uh, but in eighth grade, we had also had Davis Recht and uh, Emmeline Cuther. Uh, and in seventh grade, we had Haven Padgett um, and uh, Katie Johnson and um, Sam Burnham. And then before we even begin any of this, there's one huge debt of gratitude that we have to um, acknowledge. And um, at the beginning of the school year, I advertised to my seniors in AP government uh, if anyone would like to take on a mentoring role with the middle school students. And um, saints be praised, we had the very lovely talented, capable, wonderful Lacey Pullman help us out. And she is a rock star, and we cannot thank her enough. She's going to have huge success at Thomas More with her tennis scholarship, and she's going to be playing tennis, and she's going to become a teacher herself. And she really modeled a lot of those real-world research skills for the students that they're going to need to know in high school. And so um, before I turn it over to the students, we want to uh, acknowledge all of the wonderful things that Lacey did to help the kids out because they were fantastic. So I think Lacey's not here, but I definitely think Lacey needs a round of applause. Um, they are going to walk you through our process from beginning to end. Um, we do have a sign board here, and so I'm going to go ahead and try and put it up and hold it. Uh, but we are going to begin our presentation with the kids actually talking about the bill they proposed. Um, if someone wants to hold that side, I will hold this side. And so our first two speakers uh, are Jacob Daly and Zoe Poff. Hi, um, I'm Zoe. I'm in eighth grade at HMS, and I was one of the bill authors for um, our bill at KYA. So basically, I helped write the bill, and I presented it when we went to um, Frankfurt and Louisville. So our bill was basically a um, fundraiser bill. It was it creates a license plate for um, for a drug to raise money to buy drug dogs for drug task forces in Kentucky. So I'm Jacob Daly. I'm a seventh grader at the middle school, and so my connection with the bill was in the beginning of KYA. We were told to like get some ideas from people we knew. So one of the ideas I got was from my dad, who's the police chief in Fort Thomas, and he wanted to do something on. He said a bill that would help like fight heroin, and also Sam Burnham, my friend who participated in this, him and him and I had like an idea of doing something on heroin. And so eventually over time, with like friends and family, we morphed that to the bill we have currently. And then we'll take any questions that you guys have about the bill. The bill is called Canines to Fight Crime. 
Amy K. So, my name is Amy Herfel, and I'm in 8th grade. This is my second year in KYA. And since you've heard about our bell, I'm going to tell you about the other speaking opportunities at KYA. I was, a, besides of being a bill author, you could also be a member of the House of Representatives or the Senate, like I was. And as a member of the Senate, my job was to listen to and debate on other schools' bills through things like pro-con speeches. During pro-con speeches, you volunteer to go up in front of the House and as either a pro or a con, and you will say why you think a bill should or should pass. For example, one bill I debated was about requiring helmets for motorcycle riders. And after listening to the presentation for the bill, I thought it was a really good idea, so I went up for a pro speech, and I used the information given by the bill authors in their presentation and inferences I made to talk about how their bill saved lives, raised money for the state, and cost it very little to enforce. Giving speeches like these helped me with my public speaking. Also, I like to learn about government, so this program was really good for me. Yeah, so one of the other bills that I got to give input on was about um, adding some um, adding some wildlife underpasses under um, under the amount of like driver under the highways, so that it was kind of safe to get across. And it was really interesting to like I put input on this bill and other bills about like how it affected us and whether it was feasible or not. That was one of the bills. And then another one we had was um, so there was um, one bill that somebody presented was about requiring um, every student in every student in middle school and high school take one hour of drug prevention um, to have a drug prevention class per year. So basically, this is raising awareness and kind of getting the idea of why drugs are bad pretty much out there, making sure everybody was kind of aware of the situation. So we got to have a lot of input and kind of decide where other people's bills as well as ours would be. particulars of your bill. Um, what would it be designed to do? How did we find our research? Can you um, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, so and any of you can chime in. So The purpose of our bill is basically just to get the drugs off the streets, not necessarily to help the people who are addicted, but to more help the people that the addicted affect in their community. Um, we got our like, research from drug like the National Drug Agency, I think. And then we got it from uh, uh, like task forces around here, and also I got it from a uh, police officer in Fort Thomas who works on the team in uh, Campbell County. So we got information from them on like how much the canines cost and what they can do on the job. We also designed our bill to be kind of self-funding because we know there's cancer license plates already, so we thought, why not a license plate to help with buy canines to buy heroin? So, so we thought that was a really good idea and a great aspect of our bill. We also learned about the bill being revenue neutral versus like having costing taxpayers money. So, because um, our bill is revenue neutral, we thought it'd be a lot more feasible than having other people have to pay for it and kind of works it works itself out as opposed to having other people pay for it. Also, this feels like canines are also a lot cheaper to care for in a year than uh, hiring a police officer full time, and they're a lot safer with uh, needles, like because police officers can be cooked and have dangerous like diseases into their system. Thank you. Thank you. Argued the girls' bill in front of the House and Senate. Did you get to argue it in front of 
both groups? Or are you just presented basically? Well, we, we started in committee and then we made it out of committee to the floor of the House. Ours was a House bill, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, ours was a House bill. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we, we were defeated in the House and we were not passed on to the Senate, nor were we signed into law by the KYA governor. <laughs> well, okay. well, we'll, 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 well, we'll let the students we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? So, um, some of the pros were like, you kind of got to get yourself out there and just learn a lot of things about the government and how um, everything kind of works and get you a snapshot of the real world, real world, real world. <laughs> or discipline or acknowledge anyone in any way. I was just the furniture in the room. I'm curious, how did the, like, how did the KYA governor get, was that also a student, I assume? How did they get elected? And then how did you get selected to be in the House or the Senate? Well, we voted for the um, KYA governors. There's a new elected every year, I believe. And they all run in front of us, and we listen to their speeches, and we get to pick which ones we would like to be governor. And at the end, they tell us who's going to be elected. And then, maybe um, Well, so this year again, we got, they presented their projects and how it was the poster boards, and um, everybody was all really excited about it. And then eventually we ended up voting, and I don't remember who got voted this year. Uh, I don't know what, what to remember exactly, but I know that this the time we came past it was Drew Beecham, so that was really cool to like see um, and inspire to like see if you could be one of those eighth grade leaders and kind of see. So through the discussions, did a lot of bills get passed, or at that point did everybody just shut everything down? Um, well, a lot of them actually got passed. A lot of them got passed. Okay. Through committees, it was like a lot, a little bit more. Everything was kind of more lenient, and it was more it's kind of you either had a great bill or just it was like it wasn't good at all. So it was pretty, pretty far, pretty clear line there. But as soon as you got into like um, the house, then everybody kind of just started to divide. And it was a little bit more opinion based. Kind of mm -hmm. Hopefully you didn't wait till three o'clock in the morning to pass them like our state legislature did <laughs> with our budget this, this morning at about three forty-five a.m. Uh, could any of you see yourselves someday wanting to do this, go into politics, be a, a representative or a, a senator, Maybe. or a school board member? <laughs> <laughs> you think? Could you see that? I certainly think it's interesting enough. Maybe if I looked a little more into it, it would be a good career option. What I, what I found interesting was they were they were very tech restricted. You couldn't have president. You had to do it on. It is a very low and tech environment. Wow. There was really? the kids wanted to kind of embed an iPad and sure. cut you know and then really go all out with the technology. But they are still very you know keep it simple with the signboard. It's more about the discussion and the debate than the than the glitz and glam, I guess, if, if you will. So, Which is interesting because um, you guys are in a tech environment now. I mean, you're in a one-to-one right. one environment, so curious were any of the other people that you met or friends that you met also in that type of environment that found it a little frustrating to not be able to use technology? Um, I don't believe, like, I feel like HMS is one of the ones that's most like technology advanced, like with the math books especially. So, like, people, like, they were, like, all had the same ideas. Like, I remember talking to some people. Like, everybody was, like, always, like, everybody's always on their phones and always doing that kind of stuff, but we always like to do more things that are kind of technology, tech, um, technology like grounded. So it's kind of interesting to see how like everybody was like, it was so weird kind of to go back to the past kind of crazy. <laughs> 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 like when us old people were in school. Yeah. So it was hard to like kind of go back and like, it felt like you were taking it, it, it was different, yeah. you know? Sure. Sam and, and Case are going to kind of conclude here, but Sam is going to talk a little bit about some of the technology, if, if you don't mind. So Sam, I'll let you. Um, hi, I'm Samuel Contreras. Um, I'm in sixth grade at Highlands Middle School. Um, we did, in summary, learn a lot about um, 
other people's different opinions from different parts of the state. We learned a lot about technology and we also improved teamwork quite a bit. Um, <laughs> we were um, supported by uh, the Highlands High School media specialist, um, Mr. Gay. We also had a generous amount of help from Representative Joe Fisher. We learned a lot about using keywords and searches and which re websites are reliable and which are not. Um, we used our school provided MacBooks a lot. Um, and when it comes to new people, we made lots of friends and learned that people have different opinions from where they come from. We also learned about lots of teamwork skills. We used the computers frequently which helped us a lot. Lastly, we learned that lawmaking is an extraneous process, <laughs> but everyone should at least know how a law is made. One, one of the connections, one of the connections that you're making there is with these these kids from different regions of the state, and I can tell you that you know we work. You know, I talked to our senator today and yesterday too, and. and, and to get anything done here, it, it involves cooperation from around the state because it, there's these regional differences and regional interests. So it is good that they're they're meeting kids from other parts of the state, and thinking about problems now that are that are larger than just our community, and uh, because that that collaboration and that cooperation is really important, and it's why sometimes they come to an impasse and don't get anything done, or or they do, and it's good for everybody. So. I applaud you. That's that's awesome. Okay, great job. Nice yeah. job. It, it just occurred to me that I forgot one seventh grader who also participated. Josh Finseth was also a participant, and he could not come this evening uh, either. And I I realized I forgot him, and I didn't want to forget him. And then in regards to the bill, you know, we did get a lot of information from Representative Joe Fisher and his legislative aide, and they were wonderful to work with. Um, and uh, they gave us the exact part of the Kentucky Revised Code where we could, where the students could find the law that allows for specialty license plates to even exist in the first place. Uh, they researched them from all over America. Um, and so it was, we really were proud of this bill. Uh, and first of all, all of the students did a beautiful job. I was so proud of them. And it was so exciting to be able um, to work with them where you know I normally work with seniors and um, they're getting ready and transitioning to college and so it's a different vibe, it's a whole different thing. Um, and so working with the middle school um, and getting them to start thinking about um, civic participation was huge and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, they came, we had a quick little meeting in January after it was all over and we all realized how much we missed each other. <laughs> You know, and they're like, oh, we miss our Wednesdays, and, and it was a little family, and uh, we created a nice little community. Um, KYA also does a program called CUNA, which is the Kentucky United Nations Assembly, and don't think they didn't try to get me to try and take them to CUNA this year, and I thought, there's a learning curve to this, so maybe perhaps in the future we will try and pursue CUNA, where they participate as a country, and they pass international resolutions, and you can also have a student be elected to the UN Security Council, and then you talk about all of those really big security issues. Uh, and so I know that that is something that they're greatly interested in in the future as well. Um, and so we thank you for your attention, your time, and your support as always. Um, and uh, we thank Mr. Houghton for uh, being able to uh, let KYA uh, do their thing. And so again, thank all of you, and thank you to the board for all of your support. We really appreciate it. I have one more question for the eighth graders. Have you guys been involved for three years? No, just, just, just two. This is only the second year. Okay. And curious, do any of you know about We the People in high school? Yeah, we've talked a little about it. We have talked about it, and Jacob's brother Michael is in, in We the People this oh, year right. as well. Exactly. So, okay. right. yeah, well, I'd love to see you all in four to five years being part of that too. So, um, thanks guys for coming out tonight. Absolutely on a flight, and first week back on spring break. Each one of you get one of our t-shirts, one of our Highlands t-shirts of rich in tradition and focused on the future because that's what you, all of you are doing. I'm going to hand these to Jacob. You guys can divvy them out. There's different sizes, so I'm not sure he gets what size. <laughs> but thank you guys so very much. Thank you all for your support. Thank you. For any of you that are parents, feel free to. You are welcome to skedaddle out. We thank you for bringing your kids out tonight and for sharing them with us.
constantly changing logistics of teaching 520 students in the middle of a construction zone, ensuring their safety in a split campus, 
and the implementation of digital conversion to iPads next year. The assistant principal holds essential knowledge of many of the aspects of how Moyer functions and is an invaluable support. Our students need and deserve con continuity of leadership in order to succeed. We finally have that now in the leadership team that is, in, that is currently in place. And as a full-time team, they can maintain the instructional focus during the transition. We are going to present a lot of information tonight, and we understand that you cannot make a decision tonight. We respectfully ask that you give us a date and time to discuss this further so that we can resolve this matter quickly. We would like to discuss other issues as well. And I've included Beth Baker, Beth Crawford, Tiffany Davies, Chris Gallagher, Kara Henniger, Christy Jose, Ryan Kirk, my, Matt and Sarah Clyer, myself, Abby Kuhn, Pam and Brian Schultz, Stacy and Tim Webb, Susan Tweekus, Tracy Zayner, Mimi Rayner, and Kristen Venefron. It's just a small list of parents that were involved. Um, there's many more who couldn't be here tonight. Thank you. Hi, my name is Beth Baker. Um, I have a third grader at Moyer and a first grader at Moyer, and I also have um, a little girl that will be starting in the fall in kindergarten. Um, I would like to discuss a few concerns about losing a second grade teaching position for the 2016-2017 school year. Um, I've been in contact with Don Labor um, regarding the situation, and I would like to thank Don for your quick response and all the information that you gave me. Um, with our current numbers, there will be, next year there will be three second grade classes um, with 24 students in each class. Um, when more students enroll over the summer or throughout the school year, those numbers are obviously going to increase. Um, a similar situation occurred the year my oldest started kindergarten. Um, all the parents were going to kindergarten orientation two weeks before school started. And we were told that night that due to numbers that we had to add a second or a half day kindergarten. So three weeks before school started, um, a kindergarten teacher was hired. Um, while that situation might have ended well and worked out, um, we may not be so lucky the next time. Hiring a teacher two or three weeks before school starts seems like a risk that I wouldn't want to take. Um, According to Don, we won't be losing any staff members because we have a teacher retiring. So the current situation, as long as the numbers stay the same, may work for the 2016-2017 school year, um, but it's a short-term fix. If the numbers remain the same, every year this is going to be an ongoing issue every time the first grade, current first grade class moves up at Moyer. Um, if there are more than 24 children in a class size, class size um, any one of our children may be lost in the shuffle. When Moyer's first grade class size is compared to the first grade class size at Johnson, the results are concerning. According to the information provided in your agenda, um, Johnson's first grade class is currently 56 students, um, which is 18 or 19 students per class. Um, you know, we students and parents in this area pride themselves on the exceptional education provided by Fort Thomas Independent School District. And smaller class sizes will ensure that all students are receiving an outstanding quality education. Don't allow the class size to hinder each student from reaching their potential that Fort Thomas provides. Good evening, my name is Pam Schultz, and I would like to take a few minutes to discuss the safety at Moyer and how a full-time assistant principal would positively impact that. As Sarah stated, our student volume significantly exceeds the other two elementary schools. I believe this is projected to decline slightly next year. What is not going to change in August is our split campus. Most, I'm sorry, more students equals more opportunities for something to negatively impact their school day, from the manageable to the frightening. In February, there was a man found wandering Moyer's campus. Our principal was off-site due to the many demands of her position. Our assistant principal was reassigned to another elementary school, as she does, due to being part-time at Moyer. My question is, who is in charge of my son's safety when there is no principal or assistant principal on-site? Based on the follow-up provided, the man posed no threat to the students, but God forbid, what about next time? My kiddo will be in the trailers again next year. He was there in kindergarten, 
and I had my concerns then, with Newtown fresh on everyone's mind. Those trailers are even further from the main school. And yes, the trailers are in place because we are fortunate enough to be getting a new school. While that is true, let's not confuse the issues. The whole school safety is what I'm referring to. My dad was a cop for 20 years. Someone wandering into a school was not a blip on the radar back then when I was a student. He warned me about many things, but school safety was not one of them. In fact, school and home were the two places I felt most safe. Sadly, my kiddo doesn't get the benefit of not having to worry about what to do if someone attacks his school and his classmates. I applaud the training that you've offered Moyer staff to be at their best in case of an emergency. That was definitely a step in the right direction. It is still our belief that our school would benefit with a full-time assistant principal. Uh, this is also the belief of our site-based site decision-making team, although no formal recommendation has been made. So what would have been the difference if one of our leaders had been on campus in February? I believe a full-time assistant principal would help to ensure that there's always someone of authority in charge of my son's safety. Someone always on to oversee the execution of the training that the, that the district provided to the staff. Someone watching. I don't have fancy numbers and statistics to validate this belief. Call it mother's intuition. Thank you for your time. I would love to have the opportunity to discuss this further with yourselves and other interested Moyer parents. I would also like it recorded in the minutes that a follow-up meeting is requested. As a side note, and only speaking for myself, I know we all truly want what is best for our Mustangs. That is what makes Ford Thomas Schools the cream of the crop. With that being said, I found the published agenda notes regarding normal lawless to be petty, juvenile, and quite honestly, an embarrassing reflection upon you, our board. I think we all expect a bit more from this top-notch district, don't you think? Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? If you did not sign up, you can still speak. First, I want to... Um, Thank all three of you and for the others that I am sure in the audience in support of um, the three ladies that spoke. Uh, I, I applaud you for coming to the board. I applaud your passion. I, I thank you for bringing information to us. As you stated, we cannot make any decisions tonight. Okay. Um, also, your site-based council has not formally requested. And we know that. And, 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 not, and yes. at one point you said that, and then the other point, and then you, you said that it did not. So I truly applaud you. It takes a lot to come to a board meeting. We don't often get people coming into a board meeting, so I do applaud you and I applaud your passion and I applaud your passion for your children, which we all want the best for our kids and we want the best safety for our children as well. All, um, all our children, not yes, just Moyer. Not, not John, just Moyer. Johnson and Woodville and so, as well. Any school could benefit from having an assistant, full-time assistant principal, without question. But the reality of the situation is that, you know, when I came here four years ago, there were no elementary assistant principals. I created that position, actually, uh, in recognition of the fact that Moyer was large at the time, and then we expanded it to try to provide services to the other three elementary schools. During that same time frame, there was also no full-time guidance counselor in any of those schools. Also address that since we've been here. Um, you know, we're trying to address the needs for the specialist teachers to make sure that the, that the schools can work their schedules and, and and uh, provide uh, the additional services for the children that you know that's on the agenda tonight so you know uh, this board has been pretty darn good about trying to address the needs of our schools and quite frankly in terms of the staffing component just know that each one of our schools is staffed well above the state minimum in terms of teacher ratios um, actually uh, what happens at the elementary levels is that you take grades one through five divide that by 24 and that's that's the teacher allocation uh, if we go above that, you know, and, and you know, Ms. Labor knows this, that, you know, we will address that, that situation. But as it stands right now, um, Moyer is projected to be at 486 students next year. Uh, nearly, uh, what, 36, 34 students down from where they are currently. So, I mean, that is much more than an elementary classroom right there. Uh, so in doing the math, I mean, you do, with the retirement, you, you need one less person, but we'll see, you know, our numbers do go up sometimes, and if it calls for an additional person, they'll have that without question, because we do go above and beyond 
we always have and we always will. I, I do want to address the point about Johnson being low for first grade, and and, and I'll be honest with you, that's a, that's a struggle that we always have. Unfortunately, it's a cycle, and sometimes it's Moyer that has the smaller size grade, or it's Woodfield that has a smaller size grade, or it's Johnson. I, and myself, both my children went through Woodfield. I had a daughter who was, call it the beneficiary of a small class like Johnson had grade. My son was in the situation that you're facing in second grade. We went into the year with 24, 24, 24 and gained students. Um, th that's honestly something because we cherish our three elementary neighborhood schools. Um, that's something that we've struggled with as a district over the years. And if any of you were here, it's now 12 years ago, we honestly re recommended at that time to consolidate elementary schools because we were, we were low and we, we didn't have enough from the state standpoint to support what they thought were three elementary schools. But we fought for our three neighborhood elementary schools. There's a, there's a theory of, of thought out there that if we had all of the first graders in one building, everybody would get kind of the same attention. Um, but we as a community have chosen those three elementary neighborhood schools. And so with that choice comes some unfortunate consequences from it. Mr. Kirshner's right. If we, we can't allocate above 24 right now, but if that need so happens, that person will be provided. And I know it's probably not so ideal. Is 24 the magic number? I mean, 24 is the magic the number. That's how, that's how, we, the, that's how we do staffing in, in allocations. Terms of the initial yes. allocation. We yes. have staffing guidelines that, that we follow in the district, and all the schools are staffed on, according to those same so guidelines. Same guidelines. In so, addition to that, in addition it, to that, what's not even factored into that are any of the specials teachers. Right. You know, many elementary schools do not have art, music, world language teachers. Uh, they simply don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, at, you know, many places across the state, you get all of that above and beyond. Uh, in addition to, so and the, it, the other thing know, to remember is yeah. it's not it's not calculated at the grade level. So you do add up yeah. grades one through five, and you divide that total population by twenty four. It then falls on the site based councils as to how they take that allocation and, and allocate it. it. Um, so Kentucky law kind of limits us as a school board as to how that's allocated because that is honestly decided at the school level. Um, so 24, yes, is a magic number, but, but and correct me if I'm wrong, for fourth and fifth grade, from a state standpoint, that number is 28. Yes. So actually, we're providing more staffing than we need to because technically we could do one through three and divide that by 24, and we could do four through four and five and divide that by 28. And so actually we're providing more staff. It, Which I, I totally understand that. Right. It's just like if we get two more kids over the summer, so does that mean that there's automatically going to be a fourth? Do you know what I mean? It doesn't. Like, it doesn't, does it? No. It, so there may be more than 24 kids in the class. It, but we Correct. could also lose two children, too. You no. know? And so yeah, it, which, it, any of these things could happen. Sure, in exactly. Fact, but in I just in fact, we've heard we, that a couple in that class sure. are moving. Um, so so we really don't know. And, but technically, they could and, end up with more than 24 te kids. Technically, they could. Correct. Technically, they could. Was the, the staffing allocation rules were on the February board meeting, correct? Um, I encourage you to look at our February minutes. Okay. Um, there, we approved the staffing guidelines at that time okay. because we are required by law um, by March the 1st okay. to provide the allocations to the site-based councils. Okay. So if you look at those guidelines, that's basically how we factor the numbers that each, each building, all of the five, whether it's middle school and high school, they have different numbers that are used as well. So I encourage you to look at that. Um, and so it's just, it, it's unfortunate you get into that cycle, but that, but that is one of the things. I wanted to see if there's anything else. I don't know if any other board member wants to chime in. Um, I don't, I was trying to address some of your questions. Um, can you address who's in charge when the principal leaves the building? Essentially, uh, at each elementary school, they typically have a go-to person in that scenario that is in charge because, quite frankly, all three of them, none of, none of the three of them had assistant principals, you know, prior to. So there's typically a go-to person in each building, you know, and spouse, probably speak to that, that probably. Yeah, guidance counselor, then I'll have a classroom teacher as well. Right. 
Tanner, and also too, the incident that you're referring to was a grandfather who picked up a child every single day. There was not a man. There was not a man. Okay, so let's just just let's just, let's just make the record clear on that. Okay, we did not have an intruder at Moyer who was a, a threat to any children whatsoever. We had a grandfather who picks up children every day, who some people saw and said. He looks like a strange fellow. All right. So this was not an intruder. This was not a scary situation. This was not a intruder. Not that that couldn't happen. It could happen anywhere. But well, let's just be clear on what really happened. Okay. And, and again, I appreciate you guys coming forward. I, I think we can follow up with Dr. Labor. Um, some could of these. We will not have some, a meeting. Could we request it? We can't define that tonight. I mean, okay. let us follow up with Dr. Labor. Let us follow up with your counsel because a lot of this is something that I would expect your site-based counsel to come to us with as well. Um, not saying no, that we can't we can't set a meeting tonight. We just tonight saw the agenda yesterday, yeah, sure. so we didn't really have time to address it with our site-based counsel. Right. We, we publish our agenda 24 hours in advance of the meeting, so that's that's how the school report agenda comes up. Um, we, we can discuss this with Dr. Label, we'll work with her. I'm not saying that we're not I'm, not, I'm not trying to push off, push you off or anything like that. I think there's valid questions that you raised. I think some information can be shared. There's clearly a lot of parents that are invested in this. Um, and so I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we won't have a meeting. I'm saying let's follow it up. Let's go through the proper channels. If it's a group site-based council meeting with the board, that is something that we have done in the past as well. So there are things that we've done previously that we can address some questions and concerns. If it's an open forum, it's a town hall. There's things that we can do to do some of that. Um, because I don't want you to come out of this feeling like you've been ignored. You're not being ignored, okay? You're being heard loud and clear. I think Mr. I can tell you from being my teacher in high school, I, I I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you should have prefaced your comments by that. I should have brought my ear. Uh, yes, <laughs> please, next time, please do. I would like to see it. Okay, Karen, well, I, you, should have, you should have contacted your superintendent prior to coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and seriously, I, you know, I'm kidding aside. If you have, you ever have an issue, call yes. me. All right, you know, and, oh, we'll, we'll talk okay. about it. All right. No, okay. please. And, you know, and know that we all. If you look on our, but, if you look on our website, all five of us have our phone numbers, our emails. We are. We want to be approachable. I get stopped in Kroger's all the time by people that know me. I mean, you guys don't know me, so now you know me. If you see me in Kroger, stop me. That's that's part of what we as the five of us are elected to do. Um, and so I don't, I, I want to be involved in this conversation. We are representing you. We are representing your children. And all of us here on this board and all of the administration, we're about the kids. It's always about the kids. I've been on this board for 12 years, and I can tell you it's all the decisions that I make about children. It's not about adults. It's about children. That's how I base all of my decisions. So I want you to know that. Okay. Um, does any John? Did you well, ask anyone to say that these, you know, the meetings need to be between the parents and the administrative team first, and we get some good clarity there between those two groups, and then it comes to the board. You know, we. I, I, you said you want to be involved in it, and sure, I want to know everything right. that's going on between these two groups, but just all of a sudden one meeting, um, I don't think that gets us to we have very little time to Well, I understand, sure. But, but I'm saying that that meeting that you're requesting, I think that meeting isn't necessarily with the Board of Education. It's with the school district, or the school administrative team, and it's with the district administrative team. And then that comes together to the board, the next step. And, and we can do that. That timetable is set up between Dawn and Gene and, and, and the group, and, and then more than uh, more than willing to be involved. And, and, and please also know there are some there are some legal there are things in the law that we have to follow when things are posted. And I will kind the, the law was try, trying to lead lead to your last to point. The um, we were directed as to how to post that. Okay. So not uh, uh, it was not, not there was no option on that. Okay. okay. Just so you know. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming. Please stay involved. I encourage you to run for your councils because that's that's really how you get that's that's really how you you start getting involved. I know he was on a council. She was on a council. I was on a council. Were you on a council? Uh, he never started. <laughs> um, Brad never.
never served on a council either, as far as I know. He's always been on school board. But that's that's how you get involved in the long in the long haul too. So I I, I thank you. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody and feel free for those that were here in support, please you are welcome you're welcome to stay and learn more. <laughs> I'm ready for Starbucks now. Oh, bring some back. Okay. Um anybody else that's here for the community Thank forum? Thank you. Um anybody else for a community forum? Okay, with that. Yes. Oh, Jerry. Donna, are you getting blocked? Jerry, sorry. Jerry was, when Jerry sat here, we were very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I got up. Sorry. Anybody else? The sun was suddenly <laughs> unlocked. Yeah. Don't read too much into that, Jerry. Oh, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Mr. Wire has to leave, and he has to be back to work by 8, so let's move. <laughs> hey. No problem. I got a daughter at softball. Okay. Um, Highlands High School uh, Phase 4, that is the field house. Uh, Century has found another asphalt company I reported last month uh, that um, Quast had gone out of business. It looks like, uh, I believe, Michaels is going to go ahead and perform that work. One thing we are looking at is possibly making a small change down there and maybe going from asphalt to concrete where our buses are parking. Oh. So we're investigating that. Um, that work is would still be performed uh, late June, early July, but we are looking into that. It was a, a late suggestion, so we're going to see if that's possible. Okay. So no actual action, just a report on there. Okay. Um, Jim. Now on to the gymnasium project itself. Uh, some of the inside work that still remained was completed over spring break. Uh, a little bit of. Um, punch list items while the kids were away. One large item that is still remaining is the large decorative chandelier um, that was originally, we were, we were originally told was going to be installed last January. It still has not arrived. So we're still waiting on that. Uh, the work out front has been progressing with some better weather. Earlier this week, I believe it was Tuesday, we were able to restore traffic to the access loop out front. So that is being used actively for drop off and pick up. Uh, there's still work being done to restore uh, the access to the field house parking lot. The last pour required for that was today. We should hopefully have access to the field house parking lot in the middle of next week. And then they have some additional work to do uh, to actually finish that job up, flight pole, um, you know, the lighting, a lot of site work. Um, landscaping, things like that. So, uh, with good weather the last few days, they have made a lot of progress toward getting us that field house lot done. It looks good up front. It was a little confusing to see the two drives at first, but <laughs> now they figured it out. Now, and, and it w it may get a little confusing to some people when we get the the, the concrete for the walk of fame, right. but it will be elevated on a curb, so you know you better have a high profile SUV to climb up on that area. So, any questions about that? Project. We need to approve the payout? Yes. We need a motion and a second to approve the payout to Century for the gymnasium project. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. On to Moyer. Lots well, of work before, before done. We go, sorry. Actually, before sorry. we go there, I do, I do yes. just a couple of things. One is um, I just want to remind the board that we have sort of tentatively set a grand opening, sort of uh, open house date of May 22nd for. Um, Know, the gymnasium plaza project um, uh, the foundation is you know really interested in doing doing that and um, so we're we're shooting for that and to have it uh, the work done and the landscaping and all of that and have it all pretty done by that and then also to obviously then to follow up after that graduation as well you know so that's our that's our target and uh, more information will be forthcoming if we don't if we don't meet make that target and we'll hold Kill Hayes accountable mm -hmm. for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Yes. okay. Yes. I know it's phone number. Okay. On to Moyer. Lots of work. A lot, lot of work has been done in the last month. Uh, over spring break the vast majority of the demolition was completed. Uh, at least the part that uh, posed potential hazards to people up on campus. There's a little bit of uh, demolition left on the building itself. It's all hand work stuff that they literally will be doing by hand. Um, and then they have to remove all of the old concrete floors, footers, and things like that. That's work that can progress while we're in session. Um, once that work is done, 
then it will be able to come back in and start getting that area prepared for the new construction. If you've been over there, you've noticed that the foundations and the base for the CMU walls that outline the cafeteria, kitchen, custodial storage, and the combined kind of gymnasium, general, and, and, and PTO storage is there. You can see, you can see definition to the building on what it's supposed to be. And Schmidt Plumbing has been doing below grade uh, work, installing drain lines and, and things like that. So work over there is moving. Again, good weather the last few days. Um, things have gone quite well and quite rapidly. Uh, the retaining wall along James Avenue is 99% complete. Um, there's a little bit of grading on the uh, both sides of it that has to be done, uh, but that will be completed. Uh, the demolition contractor has to be off site for the excavator to come back in. Okay. So once that, um, once Jose's out of the way, Lana will come back in and, and keep working. And the students, Dr. Labor, no problems getting them in, in and out from around awesome. the demolition. The the construction crew has been awesome. The teachers have been awesome. There's been zero incidents, not done something very quickly. Um, all is well. Good. All good with the neighbors? Yeah. So I, far, so good. I walked to their houses right after the the, the two front ones that are right. the closest right there, and, and there were foam pieces, so I was trying to pull them out of the yard. And they saw me and said, what are you doing? Uh, my understanding from my brother is that it was a little windy one day, yes. demolition, and things came so up and over the fence. Clean it up. So, yeah. Yeah. He said that they, the one on the left said that she just loves that this is happening and she thinks it's only good and never worry about her being angry. And the other one said that they have invested in ear plugs and all as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think everyone is fine. Good. Okay. I need a motion and a second on the payout for Morell. Everything uh, I'll ask. Brad's question, I's dotted, T's crossed, yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Post. Okay. That's all for construction tonight, surprisingly enough. Yeah, I got a couple more. Con custodial supplies. We received the uh, custodial supplies um, about a week and a half ago and reviewed them and prepared a bid tabulation we are recommending that we take the lowest per quantity bidder on each uh, line item. So if you do a quick look at it, it may not look like we took the lowest cost, but for instance, um, instead of taking something that was $51 and a few cents for four gallons, we took something that was $54 for five gallons. So we did the lowest per quantity cost. Um, so these are recommended awards for the 100 and some line items that are on there. Okay. I need a motion and a second to um, accept all of the bids and award for the contracts. So I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And then an RFP for insurance services. And we are required to put this out for you know proposals um, annually, but as this proposal indicates, we can list up to three years of renewals. And so that's what we did four years ago. We put one out and awarded it to Crawford Insurance at that time, and we've renewed the last three years. So that's as far as we can go, so we're obligated to put this out again. Um, the way it's constructed, it does cover all the required insurance, property, fleet, general liability, educational legal liability, excess, umbrella liability, workers' compensation, and then, and then it still includes the optional student insurance. Did we, can we award that by category? We we've can. Done, we can. We've done that in the past. We haven't? have. Okay. Um, but last time we did not. We gave it to. We did not time. last time, and depending on uh, how much our local agents are attuned, we only received one bid. Okay. Because insurance underwriters can only right. contract with one agent. So uh, having a feeling that this was coming, Crawford had actually contracted with all underwriters who do school insurance. I don't know whether they know this is coming or not. We have not told them, but I've gotten some phone calls in the last week that made me think they strongly suspect it. Gotcha. So I don't know how many we're going to get. We're going to send it to everyone we've, right. we've sent it to previously. It will be advertised in the paper. Um, I need to get with Peggy on that, but uh, you know, we will send it out and we will see what comes back um, and who responds and how many different bids we actually get. 
and that'll be at the next board meeting. Yes. That we'll approve it. Yes. Great. All right. I need a motion and a second to approve the RFP for insurance services. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Stratton. Mr. Here Stratton is actually evening. not here this evening. I'm sorry we didn't note that in, in the agenda, but uh, we do have a second reading this evening of our policy on which defines the student attendance day. Uh, the board had previously had a discussion about that at uh, one of our working sessions, and then also we had a first reading last month. It, it essentially gives our, <coughs> our high school principal, uh, in particular, uh, a little bit more flexibility uh, going forward in terms of uh, making decisions around uh, students, individual students, as it relates to our, our the definition of a school day in yeah. Highlands. All right. If there's no questions on the second reading, I need a motion and a second to approve the second reading of policy 08.31. So second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. On to the bond of the treasurer that we do annually. This is annual, uh, as you stated. Uh, uh, as a district, provide uh, three hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollars of um, bond uh, bonding for uh, Andy, our treasurer, uh, as a bit of uh, insurance, if you will, and its uh, annual cost this year. I think it's four hundred sixty-five dollars to 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 for that. So I'd like to recommend that the board uh, consider that again. And is that still just the right right amount? That's the recommended amount, Andy. Is that? Stay. From the state, that's the recommended amount. Okay. All right. Where do we? But does the state bond that, or how does that? I'm just curious. Uh, how does the bonds state it? bonds it? Who, who we pay? Is the, the insurance? Uh, the actual. It's in the casualty. Uh, insurance. There is a. There's an insurance policy. fidelity performance. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if we had to get it or if there was one. Okay. Something. I need a motion and a second to authorize the bond of the treasurer. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. On to Mr. Krishna for the RFP for publishing services for the calendar and for traditions. Well, and that's pretty much it. We, we would like to, to get the board's approval to put out a uh, request for uh, bids on our publication services for traditions, uh, which currently is now uh, twice a year. Twice a year. Thing. Twice and, then all, and then also for our district calendar as well. We did this two years ago? Yeah. We did it three years ago. We did it with um, the option to renew two additional years at the same price. This is the third year that we are with that company, so we need to start with it. pretty much like the same with Jerry's situation gotcha. with insurance. Okay. We're at that point. Okay. All right. I need a motion and a second to approve the RFP for publishing services. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Employee wellness and incentive. Well, you know, for the past several years, the uh, board has graciously agreed to um, pay the entrance fee for any employee who uh, would participate in the Firecracker 5K on the 4th of July here at Fort Thomas. It's um, and, and we've had great participation. I mean, we've had you know uh, on, on a couple of occasions well over 100 employees, and last year I think we were right just under 100 participated uh, out of 320 you know total in the district so to, to get a third of your employees to do that is uh, you know it's, 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 it's a pretty big deal and it encourages them you know a lot of them have some fun with it in terms of pre preparing for it in terms of groups that walk and run and so on and so forth so I, I believe it does encourage uh, you know wellness and in addition to that um, it's a strong show of support for a very important community event here in Fort Thomas one that you know, annually, uh, most of the whole community comes out for and to see, uh, you know, a third of our employees out there and hopefully more, uh, you know, in support of that and, and together with all the same colors on and so on and representing the district. I, I think it's a, I think it's a win-win really actually. So I'd like to recommend that the board consider that once again this year. Great. Any questions for Gene? Comments? Mm -hmm. Not, I need a motion and a second to uh, approve the employee wellness incentive again for this year. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. New positions that we're establishing for 16 and 17. 
Well, as we've already alluded to this evening, one of the recommendations that we have tonight is for the establishment of um, uh, uh, several positions. First, first of all, at the elementary level, uh, or elementary specials, I see Ms. Gay back in the back there. Uh, and, and she knows, she, she's entrenched enough around the state to know that what I said a few minutes ago is very, very true, that not all districts support the arts the way this, one of the things I'm most proud of, really, of, about what we do in this district is the, is the total experience that we give to our children, not just at the high school level, but at the elementary level, in that they get art, and they get music, and they get world language, and uh, they have those experiences. And uh, we'd like to continue to expand on that such that uh, each each school now will have their own art and music and world language teacher. It provides more opportunities for children to be exposed to those things. And in addition, it allows much more flexibility at the school level for the principals around scheduling because while those students are in specials, uh, they can do a lot more, uh, you know, in terms of setting up you know, common plannings and things of that nature such that we can work on uh, you know, collaborative time for teachers and that sort of thing, which is one of the recommendations, if you recall, which came out of our advanced ed accreditation mm -hmm. visit. You know, they came away and said, you know, that's something that you really should consider. And we've known that. We knew that before they got here, actually. And uh, so I believe this to be a win-win. And so I'd like to recommend, is this three separate? Is yes, this three, 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 we have to do three, three separate, separate motions. motions. Okay. So I'd like to recommend the, uh, the addition of the three elementary specials such that each one, each school will have their own. For 16, 17. Skanks, do you have anything you want to add to that? I just, I would be very pleased to see that the district is bringing back the strength of the arts programs like it was several years ago. It would be a very nice um, addition to the educational program. So thank you. So three for each school. Uh, well, one each, each for each school. Oh, uh, each, okay. each will have their so each, each one. Each, each school will have visual arts. Uh, will have music, and will have world language. Of their own. Right now, we have right two, now we two, two, two which flow to, to all three. three. Got it. They right. have to travel. Got it. And, and so they float, we can't put them in our schedule all the time, right. which is why we can't have something. And so with these, because what we, I think what we've done is the ones that are allocated now. We meant are they considered district level employees and now they'll all be considered school level right, employees? Right now they're itinerant. They, they are, uh, but we we essentially have sort of designated a home school for the ones that we already have and then we, we know which schools the new folks would be added at. Okay. We sort of worked that all out, but they, they would all have, a, they would each have their own home school that they would get. Okay, great. All right, I need a motion and a second to establish three new positions at the elementary level for specials. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that one passes. Next, the instructional technology specialist. Well, as you know, as part of our, our digital conversion initiative, uh, in the 16, 17 school year, we're expanding to the elementary level. Uh, really excited to, 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 to say tonight that uh, probably, I guess, for the first time publicly in a regular board meeting, that uh, all of the children at uh, K through five next year, we'll each have an iPad uh, at all of our elementary schools. Uh, and, um, you know, the, it takes a lot of support um, in that type of environment in, in order to make it work, uh, both from a technical perspective and also just from an instructional perspective, because it's a bit of a paradigm shift for, for our teachers, um, particularly those who have maybe been in the classroom for years and, and always taught in a traditional way. Uh, but it's also a tremendous opportunity for them, you know, to expand their horizons and also really meet our kids where they are in terms of their world and, and the way they view the world and uh, what's important and relevant to them. So we're really excited about this. Um, at the middle school and the high school level, when we began this, you know, we had we knew we had to add the same thing there. So we do have uh, an instructional technology specialist at each of those schools, the middle school and the high school. Uh, so we'd like to add that elementary component. Uh, this individual will will you know work with all three schools and spend time in all three schools. And you know their role essentially is to work uh, you know partly in in the area of technical support to, to to assist teachers with that, but but most importantly to provide uh, ideas and, and and support around how to to implement the technology into instruction in a meaningful way. Okay, so 
we're, we'll be looking for someone with a strong background in, in uh, technology integration who, who understands teaching and learning and can put all those elements together and model that for teachers and support teachers as, as we make this transition over the next few years. So it's very exciting and I'd like to recommend to the board that we um, add that to the elements. So we'll have one in this one. case. That one. will go one. So what was the word used? Itinerant. 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 Yes. These, Itinerant. These, okay. these individuals are uh, they're assigned to schools but they are district. Uh, this is just another example of something that you know are assigned to our schools that are not a part of their allocation. We spoke about allocations earlier, you know, you know, each school uh, essentially is allocated, you know, this and, and it's not it's not uh, a part of their regular allocation. It's above and beyond. These these are district folks who are assigned to schools. But this is just hiring. This is one for the elementary. But from a student perspective, it's you know it's essentially uh, our three elementaries are you know roughly the size of the of the middle school you know so I mean you know right. or the high school so I mean it's it, when you start looking at it in those terms I mean it's a you know it's sort of an equal allocation that's just the logistical issue is that the, the three schools are you know in different parts of town Got it. I mean, we're going to have to probably rely on some just some individual school level employees to yep. help supplement some of that whether it's the media specialist or it's a teacher who's who's got technology background that kind of thing that, that'll be a work in progress all of the above all of the above, actually. We, we, will, we will need to use our library media specialists and support we'll, and, and identify teacher leaders in each building who, can, who, who are the early adopters who can be a part of uh, supporting their peers as, as we go through this. Does anybody have any questions? No, I need a motion and a second to improve. And to preface all this, this is clearly workable in the budget. So let's start. We should have started with yeah, that, absolutely. with the new positions. Is these are all things that Gene, yeah. has, Gene and Andy working together have worked into the budget that will be right. talked about at the May meeting and approved again for 16-17. So just to be clear. Absolutely. Okay. We, uh, we have we've put these into uh, the budget and, and uh, made it balanced to date. So uh, that's good. That's a good thing. And, uh, and also, too, apparently the sky did not fall at 3 a.m. this morning when the legislature passed a, passed a budget. So. Uh, while while there's no new money, uh, it sounds like they're not taking the money away from us. So uh, that's that's really all we needed, you know, <laughs> was for them not to take any away from us in order to make this work for us for next year. Uh, okay. So I need a motion and a second to approve the instructional technology specialist. So move second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Post. Okay. ELL teacher. Uh, our English. Uh, as a second language population has grown uh, fairly significantly over the past several years and we're to a point where uh, one individual for this district is simply not enough uh, to support the children that we have and uh, uh, Mr. Stratton uh, you know is, is really uh, strongly recommending that uh, in order for us to serve our, our ELL students uh, in a sufficient way that we have to have at least a half-time individual to to put into that mix. So, uh, will that come out of just the general fund, or is that from some of Donna's funds that I never know the no, names it is of? <laughs> it, this comes out of the general fund. Yeah. There's no there are no funds. There's no federal funds there for that no, or anything. No, 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 not for us, unfortunately. Uh, but this does actually, since at, at, at the elementary level, uh, a large number of you know, those children are at you know, Moyer, and so it, this, this does provide some additional support at Moyer uh, for those children as well. So it would be one and a half at Moyer? We don't have them in No, there's other... one and a half. To, right now there's one. One. Okay, yes. and, and we'll have one and a half, but it allows us to, to have more availability wherever these children are, but okay. at the elementary level, you know, the lawyer is the home school for ELL, so it provides a particularly additional support there at the elementary level. I think, you know, middle school or high school. And there as well, there as well, it's, it's wherever the children are. Okay. But right now, one individual is doing, is trying to provide all of that with the assistance of teachers uh, who, you know, aren't necessarily trained, you know, for that. Okay. Do you think we'll have any trouble finding someone that wants to be a part-time employee? Actually, I don't think so. 
I don't think so. I, I we there there are some folks out there, um, maybe even in our community. So we'll see. You never know. If we do, then we'll circle back around. You know, figure okay. something else out. <laughs> I need a motion in a second if there are no additional questions on uh, approving the part-time ELL teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We're done. Action items. On to discussion items. Board committee updates. This is a new thing we've added. Um, I'll give an update on the elementary. Jean's already kind of alluded to it. Um, the elementary digital conversion committee. Uh, I'm the board representative on that. Back on March 28th. It was right before sp spring break. Um, we had a special board meeting, had a quorum, um, where we approved the contract with Apple for the iPads for our elementary school students next year. We did that at that time um, in order to get the iPads in hand and image them and get them ready to give them to the teachers so that they would um, be able to have them before school's out and they can be able to learn and work with them over the summer. Um, we actually have professional development scheduled for those teachers May 27th. Okay. So, so literally, we, the day. school year will hardly be over before those, those teachers will be in training for next year with that, with that technology. Um, I will say that that committee worked. It was, uh, what did we have, roughly 25 mm -hmm. folks, um, representatives from each elementary school. We had, um, Lacey was mentioned earlier as a high school student who helped KYA. Lacey was also on our committee as somebody who has gone through the digital conversion at the high school. We had students, we had a fifth grade student from each elementary school. Um, and so each media specialist, each principal, teachers from each elementary school, parents from each elementary school, really great committee um, that uh, we all worked together and the recommendation came out as the iPads. Um, as part of that committee, the three elementary principals, Diana McGee, Ginger, Jean, and myself, had the opportunity to visit Cupertino, which is where Apple is headquartered. Um, I know two summers ago, the high school and middle school principals participated with that. Um, and it was pretty amazing what Apple was able to share with us um, from a standpoint of what these teachers are going to be able to do for these students. Um, Keith, Don, Jamie, do you guys have anything to add uh, from that visit? Powerful days that I spent as an educator. They were very polished with delivery of their devices and the applications and the creativity that it has, um, ready to inspire us to inspire our teachers. I know that I had a faculty meeting yesterday and just had just a taste of what we learned. I shared with them and they are very excited. So I'm very pleased to be able to attend. Second, it's really exciting you know, for our kids and our opportunities. Thank you. We uh, we did the factory meeting as well, and I think that trip helped me to be so excited that I, I felt like my excitement was like oozing onto them. And so at the end, we asked we had them do a, a little cheer that they made up about it, and they said zero through five, how excited they were. Zero meaning I'm so scared of opening my pants, and five meaning I'm ready for this. And we had mostly fours and fives, some threes, but nobody was at a zero, one or two. They were psyched up and ready. So they're thankful, and I'm thankful. And, Nobody peed their pants. <laughs> 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 uh, well, and, and part of this that we didn't announce, the students will also be taking them home. So it's not just an iPad to be in the classroom, but it's an iPad for each elementary student to take home as well, to build upon that. And the other thing that I think clearly came out of the high school and the middle school conversion that I want to um, ease parents' minds, because I know a lot of parents think of it's always, we're gonna have a screen in front of the kids 24 seven, and it's not. And it's really, it's just another tool to help. And it's not intended for the kids to be in front of a screen all day long. Um, but the things that Apple shared with us, I think we all came out of there so excited and so energized from what, from the capabilities that are that is going, that will be in our, our teacher's hands next fall, um, and, as well as with our students, so. Um, foundation, Jean's already mentioned that May 22nd, we're scheduling with the foundation to have an open house. Anybody else on committees? Okay. Um, board retreat. Just uh, want to remind the board members that we sort of uh, tentatively set a special working session for May 5th. Uh, uh, 
just an opportunity to sort of preview the regular May agenda, perhaps uh, take an in-depth look at the, uh, the, the draft budget at that time for 16-17, and then any other topics of interest that the board members might have, I'll send you out an email here in the next few days asking you for suggested topics for that, and, and uh, we'll, we can address those, those topics at that time. Works. All right. I need a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Ghost? Okay. Um, other business, Into the Woods is coming up at the high school this weekend? Not next, next weekend. weekend, because prom is Saturday night. So prom and prom to dawn. So anybody in the community that wants to go walk through prom to dawn, Saturday night, 9 o'clock? From 9 to 10, because it'll be open to the community. So. Is there a theme this year? The theme, uh, it's. It's like let it ride. Let it ride. Let it ride. Yeah. It's like a theme park. It's a theme park, right? So come and support and take a walk through. It's always amazing what the parents are able to, how they are able to transform that high school that you don't even look at it as a high school. What? Art house. Please fill me in. The elementary schools. The arts. Art. Arch. All, of all five schools. All five schools. Sorry. Tomorrow uh, night, Friday night, six to eight is is the reception, I believe. Right? Is that at the coffee shop? And then student work is on display in three locations. Two. Two locations. Our house, the Art House, Thomas and Fort Thomas Coffee. Thomas Coffee. And both of those venues will have the um, reception. Right. Six okay. So both. Please come look at our students do amazing work. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Mr. First grade. Uh, Woodville and Moyer first grade musicals at Woodville. That's right. Monday, Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday. And Woodville for Monday. Woodville's Monday, Monday Moyer's Monday, Tuesday. And we have followed by an art show afterwards. Every student work piece play and frame. Nice. What, what, what time is that? Monday, so the Tuesday. performance is at 6. Monday is at 6. And then the uh, art uh, display at Woodville is followed uh, after the show. And then Tuesday at Woodville it is at 7 for Moyer's they also have artwork for Moyer display? No, this year. Just and then following the Tuesday, you will also buy the two of the Four Thomas Elementary Choir concert at the high school. And that's at 7 o'clock. The 16th is the family dance for Moyer. It's 13th. It's May. It is May. <laughs> yes. It will be May before we know it, and there will be something every night in these. Look, Jamie's even got her hand yeah. out. We have an open house on April 28th, 630 and 730. It, it, there will be something on the calendar at one of our schools or multiple of our schools every day between now and May 25th when school is out. And then, then we'll have graduation as well. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks everybody for coming. Can we get you out of time?